So a quick recap on what you should know by now is uh, you should be able to create and destroy a Lua state and you should be able to get globals from Lua and we just got numbers at the moment. Uh, we learned how to use the Lua stack from C, we learned how to call Lua functions from C and then we learned how to bind and call a native function um, that we define and we call it from Lua. So the only two types we've used so far are numbers and functions. Um, we haven't used table or any of the other fancy types that you get in C, uh, sorry, in Lua. So, um, but we're getting quite far without that. So let's see how much further we can get even without doing anything with tables or anything. So um, what we should do is introduce a new type, which is user data. So user data allows you to specify a, your own type and use it in Lua. So if, if you've got your own, say, sprite, you're making a game and you've got a sprite, then this will allow you to um, let Lua make a sprite for you and use that sprite in your game. So anything that Lua can't do can, can kind of be extended in this way. So we can demonstrate that by, we'll start out by making our Lua state. And we'll immediately clean it up. And what we're going to have to do is, first thing we need to do, we need to create, I'm going to create a little Lua program here. Again, if you've not seen um, this syntax, this is just a raw string in C++. So anything between these speech marks here, these um, parentheses, is just a string. So that's what I'm going to send to Lua. So here, I'm going to write a little Lua script, and what that's going to do is we're going to we're going to call a function that we've not defined yet. We're going to we're going to call um, let's call it sprite. Let's imagine you've got a game and you, you've got sprite. So we'll call a, what's going to be a native function that's going to create a sprite for us, and it's going to assign it to the global global value sprite. Um, so the problem we've got here is this doesn't exist yet. So we need to define that. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before, which is I'm going to I'm going to define a function called create sprite right here um, using the uh, function signature that Lua specifies we have to use, which is it takes a Lua state and it returns an int. And remember, this function has to return how many values are we returning currently. Let's just say zero, because we haven't written the function yet. So there's my native function. There's me calling it from uh, from my Lua script. So uh, first thing we need to do, same as before, is we need to bind that function. So uh, we need to remember that's push C function and it's create sprite and so we push the c function onto the stack and then we're going to set a global which we're going to call well we called it create sprite here so so there you go so we've successfully bound a native function called create sprite into Lua, and then we'll we'll do our Lua do string, which runs this. Uh, which is a I'll call this Lua file. So then we're going to execute this code, which is going to. So what's going to happen here? Create the create state. We're going to bind our create sprite function. Then we're going to call our Lua script which is going to call create sprite, which will call this native function, which will do, well, nothing. Um, and it will assign that to sprite. So this currently shouldn't work. It should compile out. No, except I've got a, haven't used this parameter yet. So let's just get rid of that for now. So there we go. 
So that program again does pretty much nothing. So what we need to do now is let's say we've got some kind of native object. It's going to be called sprite. Um, it's just that it's got an X and a Y. So this is the thing that we want Lua to be able to create. So this is our own type that we've invented, but we want Lua to be able to use that. So we do that by um, creating a, what's called a user data. So Lua new, we do that with Lua new user data. So go in here. So what, what this wants is it's going to create, this is a way of getting Lua to create one of these sprites for us and Lua is going to manage the memory for this sprite. So that's the important thing to remember here is that we're, we're going to we're going to create one of these and Lua is in charge of destroying it. So if this thing goes out of scope, Lua will garbage collect it. So it needs to know the size because it needs to know how how much memory it needs to it needs to allocate space for this on the heap or wherever it's going to put it. So that's how many bytes I need to allocate this user data and it's going actually going to return me uh, a pointer to the sprite. So in this case it's a uh, but it returns it as a void star because it's a C library. So let's just cast it. So there we have. Oh, let me get my L back. So that function now creates a, a, a user datum, and all it is is it's pointed to a sprite, and the sprite hasn't been initialized or anything yet. So there's no constructors called on this or anything like that. This is a C library, remember. So um, first thing I could probably do is just maybe do a little bit of initialization on that. Let's just set these things to zero. If you had a constructor, you could call that or whatever it is you wanted to do here. And the the user the user datum is on the stack at this point, so it's been pushed onto the Lua stack. So we're just going to say that we're going to return, whoops, not two, but one value. So we're returning um, on the stack, we're returning that new user, user datum. So create sprite has created our own custom like type that we've, we've invented in our own native program. And we've, we've got a Lua script that can now create it and assign it to a global value. And like I said, the important part to keep in mind here is that Lua is in control of the memory management of that sprite. So if if it goes out of scope or you, you assign this to nil or whatever, that sprite will be garbage collected and the memory will be freed. So um, right now, um, this is probably a working program, but again, it won't do much. So it's we don't know that it's worked yet, but it certainly doesn't look like it's failed. So um, I'm going to check to see if this works by, now I've executed my program, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to get the I'm going to get the sprite that we made. So we should have a global called sprite, which we assigned here. Uh, so I'm going to get that. That pushes it onto the stack, and then I should just check. Again, there's there's like like we had is number. There's is there's an is user data function. Um, and it's the last thing on the stack, which I believe Lua calls the top of the stack. I always get a bit confused about what it calls the top and the bottom, or whether you think about them in what order. But the last thing on the stack, um, I expecting sprite is a user datum. So let's let's print out. Uh, we got a sprite from Lua, and if we didn't. We didn't get a sprite from Lua. So all that's doing is, after the script's been executed, we're, we're just going to get the global sprite back that we made in this function, and we're going to see that it did actually get it and put it onto the stack for us. So let's see if that works. So there you go. So we got a sprite from Lua. 
So there it is, and we, at least we think it's a sprite at the moment. All we know really is it's a, us a user data or user datum. So um, now we've got that on the stack, we can uh, we can get this user datum. So so like we had two number, we've got two user data, and again it's the last thing on the stack. And this, I think, returns the pointer. So again, it returns a pointer to the uh, user data we created. We know this is a sprite, so we're going to do that. And we're going to cast it. So now we have, well, we should have, we've, we've got a sprite that we created in Lua that's managed by the Lua VM. And we just got some C code that just pulls it back and has a look at it. So let's just print out and let's just see if everything that's going on is what we think is going on there. So the X is this and the Y is this. So let's see if we got it. Uh, x is 0 and y is 0. So we got a sprite from Lua and it had an x value of 0 and a y value of 0. So that's all pretty good. Um, so what about if we want to do something with this sprite? Uh, keep in mind that we haven't learnt tables or anything fancy yet so let's just do kind of the same thing we were doing before. Let's create a function that can uh, move it. We, we want to move this sprite so we'll we'll take the sprite as input and let's just move it by some arbitrary numbers. So same thing again. We're gonna we're gonna create a function that can move this sprite. This is this is gonna be the function that we bind to Lua. It's gonna return nothing, I believe. Um, and this time we're not making the, the user data, but we are going to do the same thing we did down here, really, which is we know that this this function here, we've passed it the sprite as the first parameter. So there should be, uh, well, actually, there's three parameters. So we want at negative three, we're doing our two user data and we're getting the sprite back. And let's write a move function. So we just like standard C++ style thing. We, we've put a move function onto this sprite that just takes a velocity and just m moves the position by the velocity. Nothing really that fancy. Um, so in our move sprite, this is so down here is the function that we're binding to Lua. So this is going to be the thing that calls our move sprite. So really, all we need to do there is we need to move, and we need to pass it our velocity x and velocity y. Um, but we don't have these. These were pushed onto the Lua stack, so let's get those as well. Same way we did it before. Uh, we do Lua two number, so there'll be the x value will be at minus two. Uh, that's velocity x. And at minus one, this should be the y value. So, I think that's it. We're not we're not returning any values on the stack. We, we've just we've just used the parameters that we got, and we called some function on it. So, um, last thing we need to do is we need to do the same thing we did here, which we bound the create sprite function. We're also going to bind the move sprite function. I'm going to call it move sprite. So there it is. So create a Lua state. We've bound our create. We've bound our move. Um, there's the function that we bound. It, it takes our user data, which is our custom type. Uh, we get that. We get the other parameters. We're going to call a function on that native object, and then we're going to return with nothing. And um, 
down here, here's the, here's the code from Lua basically that we've got our sprite managed by Lua and we're just going to move it. Um, and hopefully, if everything goes correctly, uh, down here when we pull these values, we pull our sprite back out of uh, Lua, we should be seeing, well it should be 5 and 7 because it was 0 and 0 to start with and the sprite should be at 5 and 7. So if that works, uh, we can't, we need to this thing wants these as ints. Let's just cast them. So there we go. So we we, we not only got a sprite from Lua, we made a sprite in Lua. Um, and we then called a, a function that we defined in um, C++. And uh, it actually worked there. It, it um, updated the position, the X and Y position of our little sprite. So again this this is why Lua is so great is that we've not really we've not learned much out of the language yet we've not even learned how to use tables and some we've not even used some of the other types but just by learning to use the stack and we've introduced the concept of user data uh, we've now made it so that my Lua script can now create sprites and it can move them um, which is something that's like um, something you're probably going to want to go to do in a video game or something like that so this is really cool um, we've not got into any of the advanced features of Lua and we're, and we're getting it to do stuff with just very, very few lines of code. So that's pretty awesome. I don't know what we'll do in the next video, but we should probably build on top of this. Maybe we'll build, uh, we'll look at the tables then because tables can start making this um, nicer. It can improve this syntax if you want a more C style object oriented syntax for this. Um, but for your purposes, this may be absolutely fine. This two-line Lua script may be exactly what you want. So we'll look at that next time.